Hey folks, it's Dag, and I wanted to talk about the chaff and flare system I designed for my Hangar 9 OV-10 Bronco. And folks, this was a pretty difficult little project because there's very little data out there. So I basically created this uh, chaff system so I could 3D print it and mount it in the airplane. I'm going to walk you through everything I did to do this. And hopefully, uh, if you have a Bronco, you'll think this is pretty kick-ass. So as you look at the back of the Bronco here, folks, you can see that basically, you know, there's a thing on the side of the boom there, and that's the chaff system. When we zoom in, that's what it looks like. And I designed mine to look like a few of the canisters had been fired. And I, I really wanted folks to try to make this as scale as possible. But one of the things that you find difficult is how scale is scale enough. I call everything I do standoff scale because I'm not going to compete in scale contest. I'm just doing it to make it look cool in the airplane. So when I first go after doing anything like this on an airplane, I try to get as much data and as much uh, documentation and all that stuff I can so I can create the most accurate representation possible. Okay, but when you get the Bronco, this right here is what's on the side of the airplane. I didn't know if that was a vent. I didn't know. Honestly, I had no idea what it was. So I reached out to all of my followers and say, hey, does anybody know what these things on the side of the OV-10 are? And actually, I ran across three different people. One was actually an OV-10 pilot uh, from Vietnam. He said that was where the chaff dispensers were, and they weren't mounted on all airplanes. They were only mounted on certain airplanes. And he couldn't remember which ones had it and which ones didn't have it. But he said that I should go out and try to find uh, the TOs or the technical orders for the aircraft. So I went on this huge search on the Internet and found one page in the technical order documents or whatever you want to call these things, depending on the, the download I found um, of the, this right here. This is the best I could find on all the Internet. I couldn't find any actual photos of the actual chaff system still mounted in an OV-10, uh, chaff flare system mounted in an OV-10. There may be one out there, but all the pictures I've gotten from friends that took them at museums, none of them have this. I am starting to think mine might be a little bit bigger than scale. So folks, what I basically did was I went into Fusion 360 with the um, little drawing I had there and decided to say, okay, how am I going to recreate this? And how am I going to be able to 3D print it and also paint it so that it looks like it's, you know, in the different um, components that make it up. I didn't want to make a whole bunch of little, you know, uh, chaff cylinders. So basically, folks, I have these things that go behind the balsa wood that you are tapped and you can run your screws into. Then you have your, <clears throat> excuse me, you have your, uh, basically the housing and you have all these different parts so that you can 3D print this and paint different parts different ways. And that way it looks like um, there's truly an in empty chaff chamber and then there's actually chaff in the other tubes, okay? If I would have 3D printed this as one piece, you would have to go and try to paint inside each of those holes or inside, you know, the tubes. So there's actually three layers that made up uh, this part. That back part I painted just black because it would look like the back of the tube. I painted the middle part. Um, the tube's black, and then the front part I painted basically, um, I'm sorry, I painted the inside part gray, and then the outside part black. And I think it's turned out really cool, folks, the way it is right now, and the way that you could put it in your, your airplane. It's just, folks, I don't know if this is really that scale. I'm going off that little um, single page in the upper right-hand corner that you're looking at. Uh, to do this. So if you are doing like scale masters and stuff like that, I don't think this is good enough. And I don't think the documentation I found would be good enough. And that's a problem, folks, on some of these airplanes that only had certain things that were attached at certain times that it was being used. This is kind of an exploded view of it, so you can understand a little bit better what I designed here. And um, now you could 3D print it and, and do it however you want. Uh, as far as colors and painting and all of that stuff. I just kind of threw this together, folks, because I didn't like the way it was printed on the boom of the fuselage. It just it looked like a vent or something. It didn't look like a, a chaff flare dispenser. And um, so that's why I was trying to do here. I did print all of, I print everything that I'm going to put on an aircraft with ASA. 
and I use a 0.6 nozzle. I use a 0.2 layer height. Uh, my, uh, let's see, my bed is at about 250 to 255. I'm sorry, my nozzle is at 250 to 255, and my bed is at 95. And that's how I 3D print it. And it, um, I use Polymaker ASA. It works absolutely perfect. And the reason I like ASA is it uh, isn't hurt by U, U, uh, the UV, and uh, the sun can't hurt it like ABS will slowly get brittle, and PLA might melt if it gets too warm in the sun. Okay, So when I looked at this right here, I'm like, okay, i got to cut a hole in the fuselage. And folks, there's nothing more kind of scary than when you've got to figure out, okay, am I going to hurt anything when I cut into this? So if you're going to do this, you don't want your blade to only go as deep as the skin is, just in case there is something in there. Now, on this particular airplane, there is nothing in there you could hurt. Now, don't take a Dremel and go grinding in there because there is a push rod for the uh, rudder, but it's far enough out of your way. You're not going to get into it or anything. Just... Be careful when you're hacking into airplanes. And I did make this so as the eight screws hold it in, hopefully it's given me a little bit of strength for the hole that I cut. Now, this was a prototype. This isn't deep enough for the one I actually built, but it was good enough for me to make sure the hole would work and that everything would line up. Uh, one thing I always do, folks, is I build templates and different things to try to get things to fit just to make sure it aligns right and it looks good in the airplane. So once I made sure this was all right, I then, uh, you know, basically folks started thinking about, okay, I've got to duplicate this on the other side of the airplane. Okay, so believe it or not, I don't know how they do this. This is a printed covering. I didn't paint this. I didn't weather it. It comes on the OV-10 just like you see it. Um, and I don't know how they put it on so meticulously uh, straight and aligned, but the rivet holes do match on the left and right hand side. So you can count the rivets back and know exactly where to put the hole. Now, this was me testing my first version. I have two versions of this, one where the chafe uh, and uh, flare tubes are not fired. They're all full, okay? So I could take out my eight screws, put this in, and people would walk around and think, okay, it hasn't been on a mission yet, okay? Uh, and folks, I was told by this guy who flew OV-10s, they always replenish this in between missions. So very rarely would you see one just sitting around like this on the runway getting ready to go on like a tactical mission they would always refill the canisters but i want this you know to kind of look like canisters been fired so maybe it came back from a mission okay um another thing folks i want you to think about is i used uh 256 screws and had tapped uh the um no i'm sorry these are 440s button heads and I tapped the uh, holes in the plastic that's behind the skin so I can take this in and out and I can ch change the dispensers. Here is the uh, CAD drawings uh, that came out of my Fusion 360 design. And it gives you a really good representation of basically what this thing is. I give you the dimensions. I show you the template. I basically show you everything you got to do to be able to mount one of these in the plane. Now, folks, these are available on my website. They're not free. And folks, I've given away a lot of stuff in my life and maybe I'll make these free one day, but I spent a ginormous amount of time drawing these and creating them. So I think it's only fair that I get a little bit more money uh, back so I can pay for the gas to pull my trailer to the airfield and fly my Bronco. <laughs> I'm trying to make enough money to break even with the hobby, folks. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, but yeah, you can go to my website and I'll put a link in the description below for my website for a link to this if you want to download it and print it yourself. So, folks, I think overall this really helps the OV-10 look really, really kick-ass. And just so you know, folks, I've already done a video on the bombs, so go find that. I'll put a link to that in the description, too. My rocket pods I'm going to do an update very soon on, just like this. And I'll put a link for that in the description also. Okay? Hey, so thanks for watching my videos, folks. Thanks for being a follower or a fan. And do me a favor, press the like and subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. And please share my videos everywhere. Rock on. Have a great day. Be safe in blue skies, folks. Have fun flying. See you next time. Bye-bye.